now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. One of my viewers wanted me to discuss a statement that Kevin Samuels allegedly made. And the statement Kevin Samuels allegedly made was saying that racism didn't destroy relationships between black men and black women. And I'd have to say that your Kevin Samuels is completely clueless as related to the origins of the divide between the black man and the black woman. Because your Kevin Samuels really does not understand the concepts of white supremacy and racism and how they played as related to black male and black female relations. Now, the main business of white supremacy is war. And I go in depth on that statement in my book, Why 70% of Black Women Are Single, which you can find in paperback and Kindle format on Amazon.com. And in the book, Why 70% of Black Women Are Single, I go into detail on how white supremacy laid out a campaign against the black man and the black woman to cause a divide between the genders and they do this deliberately because they do not want to see black men and black women have healthy relations because healthy relations between black men and black women are bad for the business of white supremacist America. Because when you have healthy relationships between black men and black women, what happens is you start to see marriages start to grow. And at one point here in America, there were more black men and black women getting married than white Americans and that's what causes a lot of white supremacists out here to get really terrified because when you have a large population of black men and black women forming families they go out here and have children and when they have children in a healthy household where there is a mother and a father in the home those children grow up to be healthy and functional adults and that is something white supremacy does not want to see because when you start to build strong black families, what you're just going to do is start to create a wealth base. So your white supremacist, in an effort to try to undermine the black community's foundation, the black family, what they wanted to do was drive a wedge between the black man and the black woman. And this is something they have wanted, to, they started to do back during the days of the civil rights movement. And what they, in order to do that, first they whispered into the ear of the black woman because she was considered to them to be the weaker vessel. So they knew that the black woman coveted the social position of the white woman. And to get her to walk away from the black man, what they did was have the white feminist, a female who was on the fringe, then approach the black woman talking about how she was not, she was being oppressed and how she was being mistreated by the black man. And this was never true because the black man in America never had any sort of economic or political power to go out here and oppress a black woman because in order for a person to get put a black woman in a second class status they would need to have economic and political power and black men never really had that moreover your black woman was working right at the side of the black man out here in the job market due to discriminatory policies like the black codes in the 1800s and many black women were forced to go out here and work due to Jim Crow policies, which stifled black men's wages because many black men over the course of Jim Crow were denied equal access to the job market. So oftentimes you had a black man and a black woman being forced to go out here and go to work in order to make ends meet because oftentimes many black men and black women 
because they were denied equal opportunity to the job market, had to work in many low-wage jobs like janitors, porters, dishwashers, and chauffeurs and maids because they were not allowed the opportunity to go out here and work in offices or to go out here and work in civil service jobs until about the 1930s or the 1940s. So your black man and black woman, they both worked in the job market and neither, they were not out here oppressing each other. In many cases, they were working together because they were all each other had. And the, when it, the feminist came along to the black woman, what she, she knew that the black woman coveted whiteness and she coveted the position of the white woman in society. So that's why a group of black women sided with the feminist movement along with the opportunity to get economic security from the leftist welfare state. Because again, the black male and even the black female's job was often put in jeopardy because a black man's employment or a black woman's employment was never stable. All it took was them burning their toast at the diner and a white person could get that angry enough to want to go out here and fire a black man or a black woman off a job and that black person would be forced to start all over again. And this is the, the, the life that black people had to endure here in the dark days of Jim Crow America and even after Jim Crow passed and that's the thing that wound up doing the damage to the black relationships was the whole racism that black people had to deal with here in America because once your black woman started to receive economic security from the welfare state and affirmative action jobs that were given to her to emasculate the black man what happened was this caused her to monkey branch over to the white supremacist and submit to his white supremacist system. So your Kevin Samuels is wrong when he sits there and says, oh, racism didn't destroy black relationships and destroy relationships between black men and black women. No, white supremacy deliberately destroyed relationships between black men and black women. And it did so because they wanted to go out here and undermine the black family because the black family was the foundation of black America. And when you undermine the foundation of the black family, you prevent people from having functional, healthy families. You prevent people from growing into functional, healthy adults. And you prevent people from passing on generational wealth from one generation to the next. So racism was deliberately done to destroy black relationships and again they started by going after the black woman because they knew that black women coveted the white female social status and they wanted to be on the same level as the white woman and what they wanted to do was use the black female to go out here and destroy relationships and then they could also, as the, as the female grew older, teach her a culture of, self, of hating the black man, making the black man the enemy, and making the black man into this no good black man. Because that propaganda came from your racist leftists who are in Hollywood and Madison Avenue. They wanted to go out here and push the narrative that the black man was a deadbeat, a black man was irresponsible. He was incapable of being a father and a husband. However, these same people, went, as they were pushing this propaganda, were actively looking to deny a black man, a heterosexual black man, access to jobs by manipulating programs like affirmative action to benefit white women and black women and make it where the female would have to tell the lie that the female had to provide for herself because the man would not go out here and do it. However, many black men like myself, we wanted to be employed. We want to go out here and take and, and be able to have, be a part of the middle class. We want to be, out, be able to go out here 
and have healthy relationships with black women. Unfortunately, your racist and your white supremacists don't like to see a healthy black man having a healthy relationship with a black woman because when they see black men and black women coming together and getting having healthy relationships, they, they know that what's going to happen at the end of the day is the black man and the black woman are going to get married and they know that once they get married they're going to have children and this is one of the things that scares your white racists the same way that your Egyptians were scared when the Hebrews were in Egypt. Now the Hebrews when they came into Egypt they were growing in population and what terrified the Egyptians was the fact that the Hebrews became such a large population of people that they feared that they would rise up and then take over. Now the reason why the Egyptians were scared was because your Egyptians bought into concepts like women being equal to a man and because your woman was empowered to be equal like a man what the females would do was they would work and they weren't out here bearing children whereas the Israelites were following the Most High and they were going out here being fruitful and multiplying because they were marrying and having families even though they were in captivity this is what made the Egyptians fear them and wanted to go out here and oppress them and the same thing is with your white American right where American racists they fear that if black people go out here and have healthy relations they will have a large population of families and they fear not only genetic annihilation they also fear black dominance and they fear that if there's black dominance they will be subjugated to a second class status so many of the people out here they're scared of black people taking power so in order to keep black people from taking power they go out here and cause a divide between the black man and the black woman and they have the black man and the black woman fighting each other because when you have two people fighting each other they are tearing each other down and if they are tearing each other down they are not working together towards building anything of substance and that's what white supremacy knows about going out here and waging war because war is their business and creating wars between those who compete against them is how they keep their power unfortunately your Kevin Samuels is not really critically thinking about what really caused this rift between black men and black women because he's just sitting there trying to say oh racism didn't happen didn't destroy those relationships and the reason why he's saying that is because basically as I've called him he's as I believe is an agent and only an agent is going to sit there and say racism didn't destroy relationships between black men and black women when black men and black women have been bombarded with propaganda ever since the 70s designed to demonize relations between black men and black women such as many of the TV shows presenting us the idea that black men are deadbeat dads and black women are baby mamas and TV shows like Oprah Winfrey Ricky Lake and many others which demonize black men and books like waiting to exhale which were designed to present the idea that there was a shortage of black good black men out there there all of this now all these narratives are extremely racist and they are designed to program the idea in a black woman's mind that a black man is an unsuitable partner however there are many black men out here who are willing to be suitable partners and if given an opportunity to compete in the economic workforce fairly you would see a lot more responsible black male fathers out here and there are a lot of responsible black male men out here who want to have healthy relationships with black women but you have guys like Kevin Samuels who make their money on black dysfunction and they need to say tell lies that racism didn't destroy relationships between black women and black men because this is how they make their money and this is how they can go out here and push these 
kind of gaslighting narratives, even though there are clearly facts that show us that racism was used to destroy relationships between black men and black women. And this was, again, deliberately done by design because your white supremacists do not want to see healthy relationships between black men and black women. I mean, you're Kevin Samuels. I want to show him some of the media that's out here that shows you whenever you see a package with a white person, the family is all there. But on the package of a black pro of the same product with a black person, all you see is a single mother. You can't say that, oh, racism didn't destroy black relationships when you see those kind of products, because in the case of the white family or the non-black family, you get to see a mother, a father, and children. But in the case of the black product, of the same product with a black person, all you see is the black woman. And you can even see this in images like your Rolling Stone presented recently as related to the George Floyd protests. That's another sign of how racism was designed to destroy black relationships because in that image, you have the black female shown leading her children without that black father in the picture. And again, if you don't, if you, all this evidence is right in front of us, but your Kevin Samuels is in denial if he's sitting there thinking, oh, racism didn't destroy black relationships. No, racism did destroy black relationships because even after slavery and your Jim Crow, the black family was intact and people wanted to have healthy relationships with each other in the black community until your white feminist came and whispered in the black woman's ear and told her that if she joined their movement and helped bluster their numbers, she could be a part of white society and she and also you had your bootlicks like your black pastor going along so and he's always been known as a historical sellout so your kevin samuels is absolutely wrong on this point and if he doesn't think racism wasn't designed to destroy black relationships then i say he's definitely no expert on relationships and he has no understanding of the dynamics that were used to destroy relationships between black men and black women because black relationships between black men and black women were only destroyed over the last 50 years and again they it was destroyed primarily because of your white supremacists who again feared black families feared black a black economy and feared black people loving themselves and he feared black love more than anything because where there is black love there is no self-hate and where there is black love there's no way for a white supremacist to feel secure in their position of power now the uh, one of my viewers requested that i make this video and if you want to request that i make a video and i know something about the subject you can donate to the cash app by clicking the link in the description box and if i know something about the subject i will sit i will go and make a video for you just like i did for this viewer now if you want to see me make more videos like this you can donate to my patreon my paypal or my cash app by clicking the link in the description box and if you want to learn more about the dysfunctional relationships that were established to divide that rift between black men and black women you can pick up my book why 70 percent of black women are single on amazon.com in paperback and kindle format you can also find it on smashwords the ibook store and google play that's all i have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe now available in paperback and kindle all about maryland Learn all about the struggles of a faded former teen sitcom star in this absolutely fabulous five-star screenplay. Get all about Maryland in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com today.